Good morning. It's the service of healing and Holy Eucharist. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And also with you. Let us pray. Of God of peace, you have taught us that in returning and rest we shall be saved. In quietness and confidence shall be our strength. By the might of your Spirit, lift us, we pray, to your presence. Well, we may be still and know that you are God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Spirit, come, fill us to overflowing. Spirit, show us your power. Spirit, be our healer. Come, Holy Spirit, heal us and make us whole. O God, we thank you for the glorious company of the apostles, and especially on this day for Simon and Jude. And we pray that as they were faithful and zealous in their mission, so we may, with ardent devotion, make known the love and mercy of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first lesson today is from Ephesians chapter 2. Now in Christ Jesus, you Gentiles who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. In his flesh he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall that is the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to God in one, in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off, and peace to those who were near. For through him both of us have access in one spirit to the Father, so then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. And next we have the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. If the world hates you, be aware that it hated me before it hated you. If you belong to the world, the world would love you as its own. Because you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, Therefore, the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, servants are not greater than their master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you. If they kept my word, they will keep yours also. But they will do all these things to you on account of my name, because they do not know him who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not have sinned, but now they have no excuse for their sin. Whoever hates me hates my father also. If I had not done among them the works that no one else did, they would not have sinned. But now they have seen and hated both me and my father, and it was to fulfill the word that is written in their law, they hated me without a cause. When the advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the father, the Spirit of truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. The Gospel. Praise the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Please be seated. I wrote a few notes to share with you this morning. Um, having not done this service for quite some time um, and um, didn't want to do like a big long sermon, but to give you some ideas about some reflections I had having to do with these readings and also kind of 
in a way, continuing some of what I had to say Sunday. Some people who spend a lot of time studying the Old Testament, the Hebrew Scriptures, are often thought to be more concerned with the law of God and not necessarily concerned with the Word of God. Some holy, some Hebrew Scripture scholars were asked which book to them was the most important and the answer that they gave surprised some people because as they talked among themselves they decided that the book that met the most importance to them in the Old Testament, the Hebrew Scriptures, was the book of Leviticus. And some of the folks that asked the question said, there you go, you're concerned about the law. That's not what they were talking, thinking about. They, in reading Leviticus carefully, and we would do the same, you soon realize that the laws in Leviticus have mostly to do with mercy and compassion and empathy, concern for the other. That's what most of the laws in Leviticus point to. The stranger, the widow, the orphan, the poor, the slaves, and it is in Leviticus, in fact, that we first read that you shall love your neighbor as yourself. One of the things that I talk about and have talked about my whole career as a priest, the command for empathy, the command for us to not only care for God, but to care for one another. And then, as I said to you in the past, I have said, it, Jesus made it even harder in that regard because he said, You've got to do that the way I did. It's not just a matter of loving your neighbor, but you've got to love your neighbor just like Jesus did. It makes it harder for all of us. But empathy matters. It makes a big difference. And you have not, this is not the first time you've heard that from me, for sure. In St. John's writings, we find this all reinforced. No one belongs to God who fails to love his brother. No one belongs to God unless they love their brother, sister. And further on, he says, if anyone says, my love is fixed on God, and then he hates his brother, he's a liar. Whoever loves God must also love his brother. And we're called to do that in the great commandment, we're called to do that, and there are no exceptions to that. It doesn't say love your brother if they do this or that, or if they look like that, or if they sound like that, or if they talk. It doesn't say any of that. Without exception, we ought to love one another. Now, it doesn't mean we're going to agree with one another all the time. That's not going to be possible because we're human beings, and we struggle with the human condition. Still, we must love one another. We must care for one another as part of God's creation. I'm going to finish by saying, sharing to you something that Thomas Merton said. You all know who Thomas Merton was. And when Thomas Merton was struggling with the Great Commandment, he would write this down because as a reminder to himself, when I am struggling with this, what I need to keep in my mind is what is best for the folks around me. What is best for the folks around me? I mentioned Sunday in my homily that, that I had a wonderful experience with a Roman Catholic priest by the name of Larry Murtha, and his, his uh, slogan was, I'm for you. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. What is best for the folks around you? So if you get into the mode of struggling with the great commandment, Ask that question. It might help. It helps me. And I hope it helps you. I'm sitting today a little bit because I'm having some trouble with my hip. And so um, I may stay for the, a little bit of the service uh, in, this, in this mode, if that's okay with you all. Let's continue. Uh, Gary, do you do this? No. No, you do that. Okay. I just thought I'd ask. This is the litany of healing. And let us name before God those for whom we offer our prayers. I ask your prayers today for Nancy Conley, a friend of mine at 
St. Thomas and Eusis, who recently lost her mother. I ask your prayers, especially for Marcia, my sister-in-law, who is struggling still with the loss of my brother and is leading a new life and um, has her challenges. Others, anyone that wants to offer? We pray for Janice and Bill um, in the struggles that they have and anyone in the parish who is struggling with any problem that they may have, spiritual, physical, emotional. God the Father, your will for all people is health and salvation. God the Son, you came that we might have life and might have it more abundantly. God the Holy Spirit, you make our bodies the temple of your presence. Holy Trinity, one God, in you we live and move and have our being. Lord, grant your healing grace to all of our sick, injured, or disabled, that they may be made whole. Grant to all who seek your guidance and to all who are lonely, anxious, or despondent a knowledge of your will and an awareness of your presence. Mend broken relationships and restore those in emotional distress to soundness of mind and serenity of spirit. Bless physicians, nurses, and all others who minister to the suffering, granting them wisdom and skill, sympathy and patience. Grant to the dying peace and a holy death and uphold by the grace and consolation of your Holy Spirit those who are bereaved. Restore to wholeness whatever is broken by human sin in our lives, in our parish, in our community, in our nation, and in the world. You are the Lord who does wonders. With you, O Lord, is the well of life. Hear us, O Lord of life. Almighty God, giver of life and health, send your blessing on all who are sick and upon those who minister to them, that all weakness may be vanquished by the triumph of the risen Christ who lives and reigns forever and ever. Join me, please. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in everlasting life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace to you all, and it's really good to see you and be with you today. Um, I miss being able to Touch one another. <laughs> the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. You fill our hearts with faith in your love and your creating and healing power. We know that you give us your peace 
and help us to make room in our hearts and lives to accept your healing touch. Therefore, we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and he said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins, whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. body of Christ, the bed of heaven, the 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 body of Christ, the bed of heaven, We say together this prayer on page 8 in the bulletin. 
To Almighty Lord, who is a strong tower, to all who put their trust in him, whom all things in heaven and on earth and under the earth bow and obey, be now and evermore your defense, and make you to know that your only name under heaven, given for health and salvation, is the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty and eternal God, so draw our hearts to you, so guide our minds, so fill our imaginations, so control our wills, that we may be wholly yours, utterly dedicated to you. And then use us, we pray, as you will, and always see your glory and the welfare of your people, to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May God the Father bless you. God the Son heal you. God the Holy Spirit give you strength. May God the Holy and Undivided Trinity guard your body, save your soul, and bring you safely to his heavenly country, where he lives and reigns forever and ever.